As journalists, we're taught, tell the story, don't be the story. Tonight, Rick Cleveland is the story. He has spent a lifetime covering Mississippi sports, and that legacy is honored with his induction into a Hall of Fame his power with the pen literally made happen. I wrote about the fact that we needed a, a place to house all this, not only the plaques, but the memorabilia of all these people, a place to celebrate Mississippi sports. The next day, my phone rings at my desk and I answer the voice on the other end said, would you please hold for Commissioner Ross? And I said, sure. And then I started trying to figure out what league Commissioner Ross was the commissioner of and what I had written to tick him off, you know. And meanwhile, here comes this big gravelly southern voice it sounded like it was coming from the bowels of hell. And it was Jim Buck Ross, and he said, Hey, son, I read your column today. You really want to make that museum happen? I said, Yes, sir, I do. And he said, Be in my office in five minutes. It seemed so unlikely to me that it would work, but uh, it did. He and his father, Ace, stand as just the third father-son duo to share induction honors. We've lived our lives covering Mississippi sports and we know how great the athletes and coaches who are in the Hall of Fame are and all that they achieved and to, to be part of it is pretty amazing. In, in retrospect, the only thing I wish is that he had lived to, to, to know that he was voted into the Hall of Fame. While he may not have lived to see the honor, Ace's sage counsel still shapes Rick's writing. Very well remember my very first game that they assigned me to, and Dad had to drive me because, of course, I was 13 years old. I couldn't drive myself. So went down there and covered the game, uh, came back to Hattiesburg, uh, set my typewriter up on the kitchen table, and uh, Dad left the room. He comes back 30 minutes later. The paper is still in the cylinder, is still clean and white. I hadn't written a single word. And he said something I can't repeat here, but basically he said, what's wrong? What, 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 what the hell you been doing, son? And uh, I said, I don't know how to get started. And he said, well, if I were you, I'd just write it the way I'd tell it to a friend. And uh, so that's, that's the way I did that first story, and I still use that advice every day. But it's not just a father and son legacy. Rick's brother, Bobby, also shares in chronicling Mississippi's rich sports history, a rarity not lost on the eldest Cleveland son. How many people get to say that they work with their father, their brother, and now with their son, you know, for over the course of my career. I mean, they've, they've all been, all been influences. And there are even fewer men who've been blessed to do what they love to do, as long as Rick Cleveland has gotten to do it. In a way, what sports writers do on a daily basis is write the history of Mississippi sports. I mean, that's what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, from 19... 65 till now, covering the greatest athletes in the world who just happen to be from, from my home state. I take pride in, in uh, you know, doing my small part for Mississippi sports. Ladies and gentlemen, the most prolific pen in our state's sports history, Mr. Rick Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you to the selection committee, to Sanderson Farms, and especially to the hardworking staff at the Mississippi Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations to the other inductees. You know, I covered Bob Brady and Jay Powell in baseball. I wrote about Marcus Dupree and Leslie Frazier in football, and I covered basketball's Eugenia Connor. I know firsthand how deserving all of you are, and I am humbled to be inducted in the same class as you splendid athletes. 
I don't know if it's possible for anyone to appreciate this honor more than I. That's because I really did grow up on Mississippi sports. I have lived it for nearly 65 years. In 1998, two years after my father's death, I, I did his acceptance speech for, this, for his induction to this Hall of Fame. This speech is going to be a lot easier than that one was. I love sports and I love the English language. I told my daddy, Ace Cleveland, I wanted to be a sports writer when I was 12 years old. He discouraged me, telling me that if, if I was smart enough to do it and do it well, that I could make a whole lot more money doing something else. 52 years later, my daddy, as usual, was dead right. I have lived outside Mississippi for only one of those 52 years, and I came back as soon as I could. I've had the good fortune to cover the likes of Archie Manning, Brett Favre, Dee Dee Lewis, Walter Payton, and Jerry Rice. I have come to know well the likes of Boo Ferris, Johnny Vaught, Davey Whitney, Lee Floyd, Babe McCarthy, W.C. Gordon, and so, so many others. I have watched the remarkable rise of women's athletics in the Magnolia State, and I have lived the society-changing integration of athletics in Mississippi. I have had the opportunity to write all that history on a daily basis. At times, I feel like the luckiest person alive because writing that history never felt like work. Funny story, when my son Tyler was six years old, his first grade teacher asked every kid to stand up, state their name, and tell what their parents did for a living. Tyler did. He said, my name is Tyler Hayes Cleveland and my mama works for the state of Mississippi. She gets up every morning, goes to the office, and works really, really hard. My daddy, he just goes to ball games. As I say, my daddy was a sports writer, my brother Bobby is a sports writer and the best storyteller in the family. My son Tyler is a sports writer, and so many of my best and closest friends are sports writers as well. As Red Smith, the greatest sports columnist ever, said, I'm aware that the games are part of every culture we know anything about and they are taken seriously. It's no accident that of all the monuments left of the Greco-Roman culture, the biggest is the ballpark, the Colosseum, the Yankee Stadium of ancient times. The man who reports on these games contributes his small bit to the record of his times. The late U.S. Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren once said, I always turn first to the sports pages which record people's accomplishments. The front page has nothing but man's failures. There's truth to that, and it suits me fine to have written so much about Mississippi's success. I can't tell you how many of these inductions I have attended when coaches and athletes talk about how much their families have meant to their success. The same is true of people who do what I do. My mother and father were always loving and tremendously supportive. Dad taught me to write stories much as I would tell them. Mom taught me about compassion and understanding that these aren't X's and O's that I'm writing about. They are real people with strengths, weaknesses, and flaws. I have never written so much about the games as I have the people who play them. My lovely, my lovely wife Liz, my son Tyler and daughter Annie have put up with my constant travel, late nights on the road, and 40-hour work weekends. I am eternally grateful for their love and support, and I would not be here tonight if not for y'all. In closing, I grew up going to games for a living with my daddy and my brother, and I have grown old going to games for a living with my son. For my money, it just does not get any better than that. Once again, thank you for being here, and thank you for this honor.